the glucose spike is due to your food. Air pollution doesn't cause a glucose spike. But the kind of food will determine the degree of the spike. And there are two reasons. One is the kind of glucose, and the other is the amount of fiber. So let's take each one individually. The kind of glucose. I just told you glucose is glucose. But in fact, polymerized glucose, called starch, has two forms. One is bread, rice, pasta, potatoes, called amylopectin. And the other one is beans, lentils, other legumes, called amylose. Amylopectin, amylose, they are not the same. Amylose, the brown food, if you will, is a string of glucoses, one end, one end. And the string is put together by bonds between the glucose molecules called alpha-1,4 bonds. Alpha-1,4 bonds, they end up giving you a glucose response that is lower and slower. Amylopectin is branched. It's not a string. It's got branches. It's got alpha-1,4 bonds, but it also has alpha-1,6 bonds. It looks like a Christmas tree. And so enzymes can basically digest different glucoses off the tree, and so you can generate a much bigger and more rapid glucose response in your intestine, and therefore you will absorb more glucose faster. It will give you a bigger rise. Well, a bigger glucose rise ultimately means a bigger insulin rise too. So amylose has been shown to have beneficial effects in terms of keeping your insulin down. Amylopectin has been shown to increase the risk for an insulin rise. Now, this is captured through a phenomenon which we, in nutrition, call glycemic index. Glycemic index tells us how high will your blood glucose rise in that spike when you consume 50 grams of carbohydrate in a given food. So if you consume 50 grams of carbohydrate in bread, your glucose is gonna go a lot higher than if you consume 50 grams of carbohydrate in beans. So bread, high glycemic index, beans, low glycemic index. Okay, now the second thing, fiber. The amount of fiber translates into slowing of that glucose absorption. So even if it's amylopectin, the presence of fiber in the food will act as a barrier. It forms a gel on the inside of your intestine, preventing glucose from actually being able to get into your bloodstream. So you will actually reduce the size of the spike by the presence of fiber. This concept of using fiber to reduce the size of the spike has a name also. It's called glycemic load. An example of this would be carrots. So carrots have a high glycemic index. If you eat 50 grams of carbohydrate in carrots, your blood glucose will go pretty high. But the question is not, what is the glycemic index of carrots? The question is, what is the glycemic load of carrots? Because in order to get 50 grams of carbohydrate in carrots, you have to eat 700 grams of carrots. You have to eat 1.4 pounds of carrots. Now, aside from Bugs Bunny, who's doing that? Nobody. And that's the point. So even though carrots have a high glycemic index, it has a low glycemic load. So amylose, fiber. Both of them control the size of the glucose spike. And when you control the glucose spike, you're controlling the insulin spike. And when you control both of those, 
you are contributing to metabolic health.